They dedicate their lives to helping orphaned animals. They open their hearts and homes to all the challenges of raising a young life, no matter how large or small. They are the Wildlife Nannies. Today on Wildlife Nannies, a thrilling day at the Australian Wildlife Health Centre in Healesville for veterinarian Kelly and her assistant Goonie. An Australian hedgehog was hit by a car and is badly injured. Veterinarian Kelly fights for the life of an opossum. And Anya, a baby wallaby, makes her first big appearance at the centre. And we spend the day with handler Joseph and the four-year-old elephant Malaika. Joseph has known Malaika since she was a few weeks old. How will she do with the children on her first visit to a public school? It's barely dawn in Australia. Goonie Hudson is on her way to her cute foundling, Wallaby Anya, in Healesville, in the southern state of Victoria. Goonie is the day nanny, and she's got to pick up Anya from the night nanny, Carolyn. Morning. Morning. How are you, Goonie? Yeah, very well. How are you? Good. Here we go. Yes, a little baby. Here she is. How is she this morning? Yeah, she's great. Yeah, she's drinking well. Perfect. She's looking around. Okay. okay. Anya's real mother didn't take care of her, and Goonie now raises the little one by hand. This German animal lover moved to Australia three years ago and is taking her little daughter to work with her for the first time. Today is a very special day for the little wallaby because she'll associate with visitors for the first time. They come to see how wildlife is being fed and raised at the center. Goonie assists the doctors at the Healesville Wildlife Center. There's always a lot to do, and before her big debut, Anya has to be examined at the Wildlife Emergency Hospital. And healthy. Yellowfoot rock wallabies, yeah, that's right. They are quite a rare species in Australia. And this is a little one that's been raised in the sanctuary, so we're just doing a check today to make sure that everything's okay and that this little one will be okay um, in hand raising for the general public, the visitors, to be able to have a look at without it causing too much stress. Kelly's final verdict? Very the good. wallaby Very baby good. is in good health and looks great, much to the relief of Goonie. The little one needs a bit more rest before her big appearance, so Anya gets put back in her bag for a little nap. But there's no rest for Goonie. Emergencies arrive all the time. Hello, how are you? Yeah, not too bad yourself. Good. Did you ring about the echidna before? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's just in the car at the moment. Um, he was in a bag, but unfortunately right. he's crawled out of the bag and he's in a bit of a tough spot to remove. He's under the seat, oh, he's sort under of the digging seat. down, holding okay. on. So I just need someone to. Will uh, Goonie be okay. able to help this in. little hedgehog? In Uttur in South Africa, the sun is just coming up. At the Buffles Drift Lodge, one little elephant girl is already wide awake and ready to begin her day with breakfast. Joseph Maseko, her handler, finally arrives and greets his adopted orphan. These two have known each other for a long time and have a very special relationship. They were born on the same farm. Their mother was break off the fence eh? and leading to the private farms, destroying the crops. So the people were trying to drive those elephants away from the field. The people were falling to drive those elephants and deciding to shoot their mothers to kill them. Okay. Malaika and the two other elephant orphans, Jambari and Bolelo, are finally escorted outside for breakfast. If one wants to become a big elephant, one has to have a healthy appetite. Meanwhile, the handlers have their job cut out for them. Every elephant baby has his own handler who's there 24 hours a day. Everyone at the lodge lives together like a big happy family, and the handlers replace not only the mother and father, but are also the elephant's teachers. There's a very tight bond between the handlers and each elephant, because it takes 12 to 20 years until the babies have grown into adults. Today is a long, exciting day for these little elephants, because they're off to visit an elephant school, and Malaika will finally get a chance to show what she's learned. Guni managed to get the echidna, an Australian hedgehog, out of the car. It's certainly bleeding. 
from his nose. Looks like he's got serious injuries to his long snout. This little fellow was very lucky to have been picked up by an alert passerby. The car in front of me was driving ahead of me about 100 metres and I could see the echidna walking across in the sunlight. Um, I thought the car would either slow down or move around him, but he didn't. He just went straight ahead and basically the echidna went right under the middle of the car and toppled over a few times and he's got blood coming out of his nose and possibly a, a broken leg, the back hind leg. Veterinarian Kelly and Gooney have to examine the prickly patient thoroughly to determine if he has a chance to survive. In order to do that, they have to anesthetize him so that he won't be in pain during the exam. Right now, Kelly fears the worst. Unfortunately, these echidnas do tend to curl into a ball to protect themselves from trauma. And if they get hit by a car, often as they curl into a ball, they've got this lovely long nose or beak and they can fracture that or break it with the impact of the trauma on the road. And if they've got a severely broken beak, it can be a bad prognosis. Her diagnosis is worrisome. If the echidna has injured its snout severely or has broken it, it won't be able to survive. It needs a healthy snout to suck termites out of their burrows for food. Gooney and Kelly discover bruising but it's difficult to determine if the snout is broken or not. Maybe an x-ray will provide that answer. So far, there's a 50-50 chance of survival for this poor echidna. While the hedgehog fights for his life, Nanny Gooney is looking in on Anya. It's time for an outing. Anya will hop around the outdoor enclosure of the center for the first time today and practice real kangaroo jumps. It's her big chance to familiarize herself with her new surroundings. Looks like Anya is a little skeptical. It would be much more comfortable to stay with adoptive mom Goonie in her warm, comfortable bag. We get the front half of the echidna here. Kelly's ready to take an x-ray. The hedgehog is still tranquilized, but will Kelly be able to save his snout? or will the injury prove fatal? At the Buffalo's Drift Lodge, all the elephants train every day. Today, Malaika is at school as well. It's important to have activities where these elephants would get bored. Out in the wild, they would learn from their herd. Here, they learn from the handlers. Although four-year-old Malaika is the youngest, She's already in full control of all the exercises. Joseph's very satisfied with his students' progress. These two have a great friendship. And of course, there's always a treat at the end of each exercise. Good girl. It's made for maize and molasses and salt. With this stuff in the pocket. It's very important to the elephant. Eh? The road, if you give them the command, you give them the road, give them the command, give them the road. Good girl, that's talking girl. Get up. Joseph's a very experienced handler of elephants. Hello. <laughs> he came with Malaika to the lodge, and she's learned everything from him. These two have known each other a long time. They were raised on the same farm. On the ground. Ask elephant pick and give. Malaika is in good spirits today, and Joseph is glad she's in command of all her tricks because they're off to meet real school children today. Yeah, now we are taking, to go, taking Malaika to go to see the school children, but Malaika, she never been with the school children, so I don't know if she's going to be having well or she's going to scare the children, because Malaika is a big elephant. Malaika is about to meet children and do her tricks for the first time. What if she becomes nervous? 
Okay, so here's our x-ray of our kidna. Now, what we're looking for, the main thing we're worried about was trauma to the actual beak. Now, I was worried particularly about the very tip of the beak there, and I think it might be slightly um, fractured, slightly out of alignment, but I'm really happy that that's actually so close to normal that I think that this echidna, given sufficient time and anti-inflammatories and antibiotics, it might mend quite well and hopefully it'll start feeding on the food we prepare for it. Nice soft food in the next couple of days. When you're happy, Bunny, let's use that bin. Mm -hmm. I've got it. Yeah. Oh, we'll put a towel in the bottom. Yep. He's had all of his... Okay. He's probably right. Would you like to put some cream on his little arm? Okay. And then you can... Wait, not Don't you run away, little <laughs> Unfortunately, there's not always a happy end for each animal emergency. But Goonie is happy that it's looking good for this little fellow. The hedgehog's snout will be treated with antibiotics to ward off infections. But the main problem now is that it has to recuperate from the accident and begin eating again. It's bed rest and a lot of relaxation and quiet for the patient. It's almost time for Anya's big debut. The visitors are pouring into the wildlife center, which belongs to a large animal park. Anya will be fed in front of a live audience for the first time today. Goonie prepares the bottle and lets her little foundling rest until showtime. It's not going to be easy getting Anya used to so many faces staring at her, but Goonie is hoping for the best. With all that noise and fuss, it's no wonder that Anya has a bit of stage fright. She's not used to so many people, but even if it's all new to her, her bottle soon holds all her attention. It doesn't matter how many people watch, as long as the milk tastes good. My name is Bunny, I'm one of the keepers, and I'm just feeding um, a little girl called Anya, and she's a little girl called Rock Wallaby from our collection. She needs to be milk fed every four hours, pretty much. So she has about 20 mils of milk, which doesn't seem a lot, but she's only a small animal and she's only got a tiny stomach. Most of the people here have never seen such a cute little wallaby and would love to pet her. But that's only permitted if Anya is relaxed and not scared. In the meantime, Kelly's looking in on her prickly patient. And it looks like the little fellow even likes hospital food. This is really good news. This is excellent because he does certainly have a slight fracture of that beak there. And it's not often that a wild echidna will actually eat this mix of food. But he's obviously um, feels good enough and not too painful to um, be enjoying that. So that's great. I'm really happy about that. Yeah, fantastic. Anya has now gotten used to all the attention as the newest star wallaby in Heelsville. The audience has also fallen in love with her. Uh, no, she was the man from the couch and she was pulled on two months ago. Um, she be probably, she probably needs another four months looking after until she's old enough to tell me about the enclosure. Guni has permitted Anya to be petted, and the little wallaby is wallowing in all this attention. She's all keyed up after her moment in the spotlight. But the next emergency case is already waiting in the wings for Guni. Hello. Oh, hi, Can I help you? 
Um, yeah, my name is Danielle. I've got a wildlife carer yeah. and I've got a ringtail possum and these days she's been sort of, sort of letting her leg hang loose and looks a bit mm. sore and I'm just I'm just thought I'd bring it in just to okay, see if you could yeah. find something wrong. Or, yeah, sure, yeah. that's a good idea. A could I concerned. just get you to come in through here with me? Yeah, no worries. I have a quick little look. She's only young. So Is she? Yeah. Okay. So how long have you had her for? A um, couple of months, yeah. <clears throat> so so and then concerned. something was wrong with her leg. Yeah, I'm not quite yeah. sure, her right leg. Mm. Very sweet. This possum will need an x-ray as well. But will the outcome be as good as with the hedgehog? It's departure time at the Buffalo's Drift Lodge. The elephant handlers are dressed in their finest. And Malaika and the other two elephant orphans are ready for the Buffalo's Drift Wildlife Park. This will be the first time that these elephants will come into contact with children from the local school. At first, the students are all a little intimidated by these big elephant pupils. Malaika is a little shy too. But with all these laughing children, ice is quickly broken. She's proving to be a pro at this already, patiently letting herself be touched by all the little hands. Malaika is four years, five months. Malaika. Yeah, but Malaika means angel. Huh? <laughs> Just stay, go and open the ears, eh? roll like a blanket. You can feel it's very soft, it's like a leather skin, it's like a velvet. <laughs> Malaika is now relishing all the enthusiasm and love from the children and rewards them with several of her tricks. This is turning into quite a memorable afternoon for her. Oh, she's been perfect, Malaika. This is the first time she was scaring, now she used it. Now she, if you look at now, she's enjoying now to film the kids. Come, come back. <laughs> The situation at the Healesville emergency looks grave. Danielle's been waiting for over an hour to find out what's wrong with her little possum. That doesn't look promising. Danielle, I'm sorry, the possum does have a broken leg, so we're going to have to do surgery on the broken leg. It's very sad, um, but we're gonna try and fix it. We're gonna have to have it for a number of days now, and yeah. um, you might be able to have it back We'll just have to see how the surgery goes and give them antibiotics and pain relief and everything. So you can have the possum now and just say goodbye and then we'll keep it for a little while. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, gorgeous. You'll be all right. They'll look after you. Hey, you're my little girl, aren't you? You'll be fine. Mind if I yeah. took it now? Yeah. Right. And we let you know how no she went. You okay? got my number. Yeah, and we give you more details. Cool. Thanks for bringing Thank it. Thank you in. so much, guys. I'm sure we can help it. Yeah. Bye bye. I'll just put him on the ground and see if it looks like it is dragging one of the back legs. Sure. Come on, little poss, actually. You hop out here, mate, and just walk along. Actually, oh. seems to be walking reasonably well. So, Goody, if you can get the little possum, that'd be good. You got it? To catch a possum is not as easy as it looks, even with a broken leg. In the end, it just wants to hide in a safe place. So what better place than to take flight up Goonie's trouser leg? Because they're wild animals, I suppose they, they pretend or they, they try to look, they try to shield injuries as much as possible. With all this emergency ward excitement, Guni can't forget about her other job, the care of her foundling Anya. It's time for her bottle again. Now that there was such a fuss last time, Anya almost looks like she's missing her audience. To get her started, 
Guni holds her baby's eyes closed. In nature, this baby would be drinking in the dark in its mother's pouch as well. The possum is being readied for the operation. It has to be anesthetized, just like the hedgehog. The fracture is clearly visible on the x-ray. I think that because it is a fracture that is right in the middle of that femur bone, I think it does have the potential to be fixed. Um, rather than have to think about euthanizing the little animal. I think that we should be able to have a pin small enough to fit through the center of that bone to bring that fracture into alignment. It's putting that little animal for a little bit of pain, but we'll give him lots of different pain relief today. Um, and we just, you know, otherwise he's, he's only going to have a, a dysfunctional leg in the future and he wouldn't be a good candidate for release back to the wild. This is really his only chance. Visitors to the center can observe the operation, but this privilege is not for everyone. During the procedure, Kelly has to concentrate, and she's oblivious to the crowds that are slowly gathering behind the glass panes. Guni and another assistant are helping her with this complicated attempt to save the leg of the little possum. It's a race against time, as such a small animal can't be put to sleep for very long. If this operation doesn't succeed, this little animal won't be able to live a normal life. It would be easy prey for predators, and in the end, that would mean death. One hour later, the surgery is over. Guni has a special warming box for this patient. The possum has to recuperate from the anesthetic, and it remains to be seen if it will fully recover from this ordeal. After a successful appearance in front of the school children, these little troopers deserve a special treat. It's their favorite time of day. The whole family gets to go swimming in the local lake, handlers included. It's very hot and the elephants are relishing this refreshing break. The fact that Joseph joined them and enjoys the water as much as his elephants is not lost on them. It creates a special relationship between him and Malaika. There's a lot of splashing and fun. And like human children, these elephant babies don't want to leave. And so, Malaika successfully met her challenge and is ready for more adventures with her best friend and teacher, Joseph. The day's also slowly coming to an end in Heelsville. Goonie checks on the little possum one last time. The patient looks like he's recovered from his operation. He's ready for a little milk and some tender, loving care from Nurse Goonie. The visitors are slowly leaving the center as Goonie now checks on the hedgehog patient. He's already busy with his second portion of hospital food and is well on his way to recovery. Now Goonie can pack up Anya and head back to the night nanny. On the way out, there are some eucalyptus treats for a koala patient, and then Goonie and Anya can call it a day.
Tonight, Goonie really deserves her evening off. Tonight, Nanny Carolyn's glad to have her baby back in her arms. Hello. There's your baby back. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Hello. How's she gone? Very well. Good. Very well. She had a good day. Excellent. <laughs> we loved her. How could you not it's love her face that's that cute? That's right. She is very cute. So, yeah, thank you very much. With all this love and care, Anya is well on her way to being released back into the wild. Next time on Wildlife Nannies, Alfie, a tiny 10-week-old vervet monkey, will he be...